Is the higher education sector in a crisis? Can the state afford free higher education? What triggered today's running battle between students and the police at Vets University? Are students prepared to lose out on their studies for 2016? What time is it? It's question time. Hello and welcome to the show. My name is Mpo Tedu. Tensions reached boiling point at Vets University in the morning following clashes between students and police officers deployed on campus. Management had resolved to resume the academic program today, but a group of students remained resolute to disrupt lectures. Yesterday's emergency imbizo on higher education funding does not seem to have convinced protesting students to change their minds. While the deadlock continues, a number of students appear to be willing to continue with their studies. But can the vet student body and management reach an amicable solution to end the stalemate? We are live, and therefore you can call us and air your views. The number to dial is 089-110-4210. Our Twitter handle at question time 24. My guest today, Fasiha Hassan, she is the Vets SRC Secretary General. And uh, let me welcome you to the show, Fasiha. Well, we appreciate you making time. I thought it was uh, well managed um, in the morning until, you know, the skirmishes started. Mm. Well, this morning we arrived on campus. Um, unfortunately, the presidential imbizo, like you said, has not fixed the problem. Um, we had hoped as students and student leaders to engage with the president, ha have him hear our voice and really come to some form of a, a solution. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately that didn't happen. Um, anyway, you're quite right. This morning uh, we went into university and in fact uh, we were walking up, and I think you've got the footage, uh, walking up one of the roads in Vitz University, um, peacefully might I add, when police then opened up fire with stun grenades and tear gas in an attempt to disperse the crowd. Um, but because it was unprovoked in that process, there was chaos, students broke up into different groups, um, and ultimately we were able to bring everyone back together at the Great Hall Stairs. I think that's the footage there. We, were, we got to the Great Hall Stairs, we were able to have, we tried to have some form of a meeting, but something, there, there was a deterioration again, and police opened fire with rubber bullets again. Mm. Um, and it's been, very, it's been a very, very difficult day for students, um, for, for all those who are injured, I think for the university itself as well. We're in a crisis. We're very much in a crisis. But tell me something, and I mean, I must add there to our viewers that we had invited Vets University Management, but they told us, um, they are not able, they've got commitments around the time at which we are on air. So it's not like we didn't. And we also extended an invitation to the South African Police Service. Colonel Lungelo Zamini then said to me, at six o'clock we've got a briefing, a media briefing, uh, which will be addressed by the Acting National Commissioner General Khomoto Pasan. So we did try our best to get all sides uh, to, uh, who are involved in this. Now, it would appear to me that there is no communication between you and uh, the university management. There is some communication, um, and a perfect example of this is we appeal to Professor Adam Habib to not open up the academic program today. Ultimately, because we had concerns about clashes, we had concerns about the fact that yesterday's meeting unfortunately did wa not work. We knew about what the security cluster had said about the zero tolerance policy towards students and I think we had a genuine concern about the safety of all students and all university staff and that's why we employed him not to actually open up the academic program in favor of us having a discussion and like you say trying to find some form of an amicable solution. Mm -hmm. What are they saying to you? Don't they want to meet? What is it? All right, so there's two matters, right? The yeah. first is the internal VITS issue uh, on an institutional level and those demands, uh, and we're happy to open up that discussion. In fact, it will be opened. But the second is really a national one. I think that's the more important element, where student leaders from across the country want to engage with Treasury. We want to engage with the presidency. I mean, we've developed a model uh, where we've had students, we've had chief economists, actuarial scientists, accountants. We've developed a model for free and quality education. Now we want to talk about how to implement and how to finance it. So there's the two elements, where we want to meet with the presidents and Treasury, mm -hmm. and we also need to meet with the vice chancellor, ultimately, ultimately, so that we can save the academic year. Bob, you are in Gauteng. Oh, good evening. Yes, welcome. Thank you very much. 
and to the lady, good evening to you. Yes. Uh, Mpo. Yes. You, you can't fight all the time. You can't fight. If, if the students have grievances, it's allowed. The mechanism through which they transmit their grievances is wrong. Because you have not less than 5,000, 3,000, 2,000 students disrupting the rest of all of us. Some of us come from foreign countries. We love South African education. It's the best education in Africa. We come here, we get frustrated. We are paying our own money, and these people don't seem to realize that what they're doing, despite being right, is selfish. You can't destroy university property. I mean, why? Why should the rest of us, so should the 77% who poll that we, should, we need to go back to class, should you also take up arms and stones and start fighting? Okay. We are a larger number than them. Okay, Bob, thanks for the question. Mm. Like we've said before, free and quality education is a societal issue. It's something that affects not just universities, but every single person in this country. Mm -hmm. It's what we're going to use to build society. And it's not even for us. It's for future generations to come. It's an investment in the future. So ours is to do, no one can say this is not about us. I think that's the first point, even those from privileged backgrounds. But the second, and I think this is an important point, international students as well around the issue of free education has been uh, some amount of controversy. Um, for, firstly, because they're concerned around a possible extension of the academic program, mm -hmm. but also because because the, the model of free education, does it assist international students? And ours has been to say that students from within the borders of Africa need to also have access to, to, to free higher education, or at least higher education right now. Um, so I just wanted to speak to that on the international student level. Now, there seems to be um, uh, confusion here. I, I was listening to Mkabo Lamini. He's saying we don't know South, uh, uh, what is it, South African the Union? South African South. Union, South, yes. South. Yes, we don't know South, it's delinquents and all, and all, all, all those things. Are you, as Vets University SRC, and you are also this SR, the, the Secretary General of uh, the South African Union of Students. So what is happening? Who is who? Are you not uh, singing from the same uh, tune uh, sheet? We've with, got with the, the rest? South African Union of Students, of which I'm the Deputy Secretary. Uh, yes. But in this space, I'm the WITS SRC Secretary General. Sure. Um, but I think it's very quickly important to outline how it works. So students vote in, in SRC. And mm -hmm. students themselves mandate the SRC to, to really carry out um, and push their interests, which is what's happening at Wits University in particular. That Wits students are saying that we still need to uh, look at uh, higher education, free higher education. We haven't really dealt with those issues. Mm -hmm. And then SRCs all come together and they make up the South African Union of Students. So whether we like it or not, there is a link. Um, I think there comes... A difficulty in that South is a national body, so it has to take into cognizance every single university, whereas WITS as a particular institution has a different dynamic and has a slightly different constituency who has mandated the SRC to move in this direction. Okay, so you have different uh, policies when it comes to this uh, fees must fall or what? There's one thing that we all agree on, regardless of organization, regardless of political affiliation, and that is free and quality in a decolonized higher education. Okay. So as long as we agree on that, uh, the movement will be unified and we will be able to realize that goal. Anonymous, you are calling us from somewhere. Uh, firstly, I need to indicate that uh, uh, his son need to be honest with us. Okay. Um, I don't know what are they trying to legitimize. Um, she says they want to talk to the presidency at Treasury. But a process has already been established. Why can't they submit whatever that they're talking about to that process that has been established in terms of the task team? One. Secondly, why are they disrespecting the rights of others who want to study and go from one class to class and force other learners to stop uh, academic program? Thirdly, um, why can they ask, there is this allegation that has been going around, that universities are having a lot of billions uh, on offshore. 
why can't they ask those uh, universities to say, that money that is offshore, why can't you activate it to support the students, especially the poor? Okay. Because you cannot uh, fund everybody willy-nilly. It should okay. be the poor that should be funded, those who can afford, the children of the bishops, the children of people who are earning a lot of money. I think the government has gone too far by saying we are going to consider NASFAS, we are going to consider even the missing medal, okay. the 600. But okay. the question that as she's saying they want to talk to the president, the treasury, there is a process that has already been established. All right. Why can't must, we go that route? We've got your questions very quickly. Right. There's a commission on free education, or rather on the fee-free education. And we've, in this very heavy platform, discussed the problems with the commission around yes. how late it's going to report back. Uh, and unfortunately, when Minister Nzamande made the announcement, there was a general anger around, st around students to say that access to education remains closed. That even if you're going to co uh, cover an increment of, let's say, 8%, on average, university will cost at least 100,000 rand. All that's being covered is 8,000 rand. A poor student, a student belonging to the missing middle, still has to pay the 100K. So access remains closed. The commission is coming too late. Hundreds of thousands of students with their entire livelihoods are going to be excluded in January. And we've said no multiple times and we've raised these issues. Okay. That's why we even developed the model now to even provide a solution. Now we just want to talk implementation and timelines. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. When we return, we'll be taking your call. Yeah, is the leader of the... Uh, SRC at Vets University. What are your thoughts? What do you want to ask them? What do you want to tell them? 089-110-4210. We shall return. Welcome back. You're still watching Question Time. My guest today, Fasiha Hassan. She's the Vets SRC Secretary General. And the caller on the line is Dagi in the Val. Hi. Welcome, Dagi. How are you? I'm well. How are you? I'm well, thank you. Yes. I'm actually glad to see that the ANC is getting some of their own medicine back. Okay. But let me just qualify that. What I feel is that if you think you're going to get anything for free in life, you're very much mistaken. Nothing ever comes for free. If they don't pay, another generation or another generation is going to pay for what they get for nothing. Okay. So, so that argument doesn't hold water. The other thing that I want to say is that Oki that's an advocate, he's mm. actually instigating these guys. How so, Dougie? Because he's there and he says, no, we are with you, and he, he okays the wrongdoing. He okays the wrongdoing, not the way of going to do a thing right. He, he okays the thing 
to do a thing wrong and then expect a, a good result. You cannot get a good result. Okay. If you, if you carry on this way. And it's good. I, I say yes. The ANC is good that they're getting some of their own medicine back that they gave in 1990. Okay. It's a good thing. Okay, Dougie, thank you very much for the call. Let me speak to the idea of it's free, not free. Nothing is ever technically free, right? Uh, and we acknowledge that money has to be coming into the system. The argument and how the model looks at it, it says that it needs to be government subsidy, there needs to be private sector elements and, 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 and contribution, as well as a possible corporate or wealth tax. So money will be coming into the system. It will be costing um, in some ways in the economy. But like we've said, the benefit of it is much, much greater than we've spoken about before. Okay. And let me speak to about the presence of other members of society within the movement. There have been a variety of them. Uh, and even today, former black student society leaders, those who were student leaders during the anti-apartheid movement, mm. they have pledged their support and thrown their weight behind the campaign uh, for free education, ultimately because they recognize that it's a very legitimate cause. Mm. And very, very importantly, our very own mum, Winnie Mandela herself, has also spoken about the course. She will be joining us in the next few days. Um, she's even said that um, Prof Habib and other vice chancellors need to remove police from campus, that we don't need another 76th generation, that in, in essence, we can come to some form of a solution okay. without there having blood to be shed. Now tell me, um, are you prepared to sacrifice your studies uh, for 2016? That's a discussion that we've already sort of started to have as the student movement. Mm -hmm. um, but ultimately, it's not the goal. Let's be honest. The goal is not to lose the academic year. That's okay. what we're fighting to gain access to. But we must be very, very clear on a few things. If the academic year is lost, it will not be the fault of students. Okay. It is unfortunately, whether we like it or not, the fact that the state has not addressed the greatest structural crisis of higher education. We've merely identified and made people aware of it. And we didn't do so yesterday or last week. We've done so for, the mo for months, for years, in fact. We've recognized that there's been underfunding, that there's been a scarce uh, uh, skills gap, the fact that universities have been in many ways allowed to run amok. Uh, and that's part of the problem that we find ourselves in now. Solomzi, you are in PE. Thanks, 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 Mr. Yes. Um, so I really understand the, the plight of, of the students. Okay. But on the, on the same time, I don't think the approach that they're doing it is, is proper, in, in the sense that why not allow those that are eligible to, to graduate for, for the year, allow them to complete the program, the academic year, and then graduate at the end of the year, and then next year, then you do your total shutdown. Okay. That's the comment that I'd like to make. Yeah. I would love to go back to class. Uh, I'm not the only one. But unfortunately, we need to make very clear that this so-called silent majority that other vice chancellors like to talk about, you know, they say we are a noisy minority. The real silent majority is every single young South African who has had access to education denied to them, not because they are not academically qualifying, but by virtue of the fact that they are poor. And if we do not fight for that, and if we do not push this particular struggle, I think we would be not just betraying our generation's mandate, but ultimately, we're not going to be able to move forward as a country. Like we've spoken about, a plateaued economic growth, high unemployment rates, high crime rates, um, not enough skills in the country. How are we going to solve these issues? Free and quality education is one of the pivotal pieces of the puzzle. But what do you say? about those students who want to go uh, back to, to, to class. I mean, I saw one who was badly harassed. He, he was quite brave and he stood up there with his placard that says, I also have a democratic right to learn. But gee. Every single South African has a democratic right to learn. But quite clearly, if you're poor, that right is not allowed and is not really open. Because being intelligent isn't good enough if you're poor. And that is why we keep saying that this is not a selfish course. This is not something where we woke up one day and said, let's disrupt the entire country. No, ours is to open up access to education so we can benefit society. But also to say that when Wits University held their so-called opinion poll, the question was fundamentally flawed. What they asked is, do students want to go back to class? Yes, we all want to go back to class. But what should have been asked 
And really importantly, why did the academic program close in the first place? Because of the lack of access to education, a lack of free education. Okay. There was no substantive engagement on those issues. And until we're able to substantively engage, we're not going to find solutions. So you are in Cape Town. Yes, yes, I'm both. Uh, I, I would like just to ask the lady in the studio if she can say maybe she can go tomorrow morning and tell other students that whoever is caught destroying property of the university, the law must take its course that as a, as a responsibility from the students also to say if you break anything for the university, you are on your own. We are only for the legitimate cause of free education and not to break the property. Thank yes. you so much. Thanks very much though, for, that, for that question. We've taken a very strong stance on the issue of arson, malicious damage to property and violence, that we condemn it. Um, we are not here to destroy property, right? Ours is to use that property ultimately so that we can learn. But let's be very clear on another matter. When we value a broken window more than a human life, there is something fundamentally wrong in society. And students have come into a space where I think there's a lack of understanding from the public to say what has gotten to the point where we find ourselves in such a crisis? Why is it that we're only showing the footage of what happens after uh, security and, and, and police provoke us? Why are we only showing that uh, story and not the other side? But are you, would you agree that you are losing the plot somehow? You, you're fighting the police instead of fighting the vets management. We're only in a space of self-defense around police. Police's job, in actual fact, is to also protect us as students, right? It's to protect human lives, less about windows and buildings and pillars and such. But the real enemy, essentially, is not even its management. The real enemy is the system, the structurally racist system, the one that doesn't allow for us to learn in an amicable environment. And that is where and how we are trying to target okay. um, in order for us to, like we say, realize not just transformational goals, but ultimately so that when we go to class, we're going to change the face of this country and materially change the lives of our people. Amos, you are in Krobler's down. Amos? Okay, we seem to have lost Amos there. You can call us back. But there's one, uh, there's, there's some footage that I want to refer you to. Yeah. Um, of, of students attacking a police um, officer by the steps of uh, the, the, the uh, Great Hall. Um, I don't know whether uh, the police had um, threatened to or had manhandled Mkebo. And um, the guy was badly attacked by students. Mkabo himself was also badly attacked and yeah. has undergone medical assistance quite seriously. If he had come today, you would have seen it. But that doesn't justify what happened. Um, and I think that's why I keep speaking. And I'm, I'm a lot more somber in my response now because when people go to such extremes, we need to ask what happened for there to be such desperation that you would put your body on the line in order to realize this goal. And that's one of the elements that we're not taking into consideration, this level of desperation of students, because we've engaged. We've gone to boardroom meetings, we went to the Mbiza, we went, and we're not taken seriously. We're not even spoken to. The president walks into the Mbiza and reads a press statement. He, he didn't even hear her, what we had to say. I don't even think he's been to the ground to see what's going on. Humphrey, you're in Bumalang. Yes, in good afternoon. Yes, welcome. Man, sorry, um, I've been watching our program, and this uh, it, it, it is very interesting. Right. Let me get to the point. I'm a school teacher. Okay. I have managed my three daughters through university, and they are the, almost the same or bigger than the girls that you are speaking to. And from the look of things, if the, uh, if the, the, the lady is speaking, she can afford, the parents can afford to pay for her. What I'm trying to say is almost 75% of parents whose children are at university can afford. You know, let me tell you something. Government is doing all its best. I am a school teacher. We have learners who are, you know, the Section 21 school, there is feeding, there is what. But what I'm trying to say is that if government alone can go, it, because government, who is government at the end of the day? Because government is all of us here. 
I'm trying to appeal to my younger lady there, whose parents I think can afford their through that education, okay. to encourage those parents who can afford to pay to do so, and to keep helping the learners who can afford, because government is doing so. Let those who, whose, par- whose parents cannot afford be assisted, and let those parents who can afford to do so, because many of us can do so. Many parents, okay. I know black children cr- come, come from the generation of poverty. Okay. But I can tell you, many of us are driving flashy cars, expensive houses, and so on. We can afford, the, the lady I can watch here, she's clearly one of those ladies who can afford here. Okay. Lady, please, when I, 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 I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a self study graduate, okay. I wanted to be that a graduate Humphrey, of um, th- Thank you very much. Unfortunately, we have run out of time. I would have loved to take you on this. I don't know how. Uh, Government is not doing all that, it's can, all that it can. Okay. Um, in fact, the statistics reveal over the last 10 or so years, they've okay. actually reduced support to higher education. Um, but let's quickly speak about free education for the poor and for all, because we I think there's concerns about make those time for that and those who can afford yeah in the initial rollout will be paying ultimately okay. through either wealth tax or directly to the university unfortunately we have run out of time our usual story but that was question time for today a big thank you to my guest and to you for watching the show for me and the crew you have yourself a wonderful time i have a hot